absolute revolution is in store for you. So we wrote several, several articles like basilar invagination, seeding omalia, carry malformation. We have changed the term carry malformation to formation. Mal malformation means wrong and formation means good or a divine intervention. So in the year 2013, I wrote this article which has created a flutter in the, at least neurosurgery. I don't know about how much spinal surgeons will have read this article. But there is a big discussion going on in the whole world of neurosurgery that atlantoaxial instability is the cause of carry and not decompression, but atlantoaxial fixation is the treatment. So there can be C1 over C2 listhesis. There is no need for decompression, basilar invagination, you stabilize and realign the craniovertebral junction. Now the whole world is following this concept. There is no argument about it. Now you see here C1 behind C2. This carry and syringe, many, most majority of the people in the world still do foramen magnum decompression. In my estimation, that is an absolutely wrong operation. Without doubt, without hesitation, I am going to say here that that treatment is history. You have to do C1, C2 fixation and syringe will reduce and the patient, of course, will dramatically reduce. Even when the, you see here, there is little bit listesis here. There is no problem here. There is no compression here. This patient does not need any decompression. This patient needs fixation. Even when the facets are in alignment, presence of carry, presence of assimilation, presence of C23 fusion are indicators of an unstable atlantoaxial joint. So instability may not be manifested on radiol. So that is the issue. And syringomyelia will reduce in 100% of patients if you do a scan after sigma, 100%. There is no arbitrariness in what I'm seeing. And there are several, several cases which I have shown on various occasions in even in some uh, webinars. And this was my paper I published about three years ago with 388 cases of carry and sitting. If you see, if you talk of appendix operation, if you talk of hernia operation, they will never say I can get 100% of result. But I'm saying carry fixation, I will show you 100% result. So that is the extent. So carry is secondary, carry is protective, carry is reversible. Like syringomyelia, we said, the whole world was putting shunts and thick operatorial shunts and this shunts and that shunt. That syringomyelia is secondary, it is protective, it is reversible. Bone fusions, clipal file abnormality, platybasia are protective natural processes reversible after C1, C2 fixation, even when there is no compression, does not mean anything. So according to me, compression, compression, we should not go on talking about compression all the time. We should analyze the subject. Short neck, torticollis, they are all secondary and protective. These kind of, if you want to give this kind of smile to your patients, you have to understand where is the problem. Decompression is not the trick. Kyphoscoliosis, many of you are, most of your spine surgeons, I have to tell you in this age group, if you get kyphoscoliosis, it is in more than 80% of patients, the problem is at C1, C2 and central instability and stabilization of this C1, C2 is the answer not any kind of stabilization of the dorsal number spine. Now I want to take, to you, take you to another revolution which is more relevant to your subject here. Cranio-vertebral degeneration, nobody has talked in the literature, nobody has talked. So this was the article I wrote about 13 or 14 years ago about degeneration. I want you young, most of you are young, most of you are like my children and my students, carefully see this slide. Reduction in the joint space, buckling of the posterior longitudinal ligament, osteophyte formation. These are not primary events. These are not pathological events. These are secondary to vertical spinal instability. These are protective and these are reversible after C1, C2 fixation. Ossification of the apical ligament, ossification here, osteophyte formation here are not primary. There is no role for decompression. You realign and do fixation. That is the treatment. These 
will reverse spontaneously. Retroodontoid pseudo tumor, the whole world was doing transoral surgery and lateral re resection and decompression from front and behind. And I must tell you, when you, are, you go to America, everybody in the world is still doing decompressions and transoral resection still today. I am saying this is not primary, this is secondary, this is reversible after atlantoaxial fixation. And many people are following this concept. I introduced this concept about 12, 13 years ago, and this was the first paper which I published on retroodontoid. Retroodontoid pseudotumor is like an osteophyte. Osteophyte. You don't have to remove the osteophytes, which I will discuss now. Now I talked about listhesis here. Nobody in the world has talked about listhesis of subaxial facets as a due to weakness of the muscles of the back of the spine as a cause of degeneration, as a cause of spondylosis. Carefully, my dear friends, see this slide. Reduction in the intervertebral disc space, buckling of these, bulging of these discs, osteophyte formation, bulging of these discs are not, are not primary events. They are secondary. They are protective and they are reversible. And they are indicators of unstable spine. They are indicators of vertical spinal instability, which is not manifested radiologically. Did you, did you get my point? I still see some people working on the telephone, which is a little bit surprising that I'm introducing a concept which can revolutionize your life and you are still working on some WhatsApp nonsense. This little bit surprises me, but enjoy it. So I, in about 15 years ago, we introduced this treatment of facetal distraction. We introduced these kind of intra-articular cages for the first time in the literature where we said you listhesis is the problem. You introduce these distractors and you will reverse the entire story. When you introduce these distractors, the ligamentum flavum debuckles, the posterior longitudinal ligament debuckles, the intervertebral space becomes big, the interdiscal space becomes big, and there is complete change in the architecture. Carefully see this slide, this ligamentum flavum buckling, this disc buckling, and I have introduced these spaces and everything has gone in the immediate post-operative period. There is no decompression. Decompression is for the first time in the literature in this article, we mentioned that decompression is not the treatment of degenerative spine. Same concept for lumbar canal stenosis, we introduced that there is no need for decompression. There is vertical listhesis, vertical instability. You introduce these cages and that is the end of the story. Decompression is not necessary. And this was the article published in Journal of Neurosurgery, which is the number one journal of neurosurgery. So decompression for compressed tissue is the basis of our treatment in spine surgery. Is that correct? When we see a spine, we see, oh, here is the compression. And when we treat with, whether with endoscope or whatever scope, decompression is our aim. There is no other aim in spine surgery. In the year 2013, we introduced this revolutionary concept that there is no need for decompression. Only fixation is the treatment for degenerative spine. And more recently, I published this paper with, of course, my work is based on KM Hospital, which is a, like a mecca of neurosurgery and with volumes of cases. So I can talk with great confidence and without any kind of hesitation and arbitrariness. And many people from the world of neurosurgery have visited me on several occasions to see what I'm doing because these are all in publication. So read carefully this title. If you read carefully, muscle weakness, see this title, and published in World Neurosurgery. Muscle weakness related spinal instability is the cause of spinal degeneration. Not this, this reduction in water content or this herniation, not that. Muscle weakness is the cause and muscle weakness causes instability and stabilization is the treatment. Decompression has no role. So carefully see this slide with multi-level spinal degeneration. I do only fixation and no decompression after 18 months of surgery there, everything has finished. Spontaneous, these are secondary, these are reversible. 
And I have got several hundred patients where I can show you that osteophytes disappear after doing only fixation as the treatment and there is no need for decompression. So we can look at degenerative myelopathy in a different version. We always talk of herniation and we talk of removal there of that herniation, talk about instability. So instability is the cause of symptoms. Even when the radiology is normal, there can be instability of spine. Even if the radiology is normal, there may be a need for stabilization. This is a very huge thing we can say. Instability is the cause of symptoms and stabilization is the treatment. Very beautiful sentence you should read from my uh, article title. Not neural deformation or compression, but instability is the cause of symptoms in degenerative spinal disease. Now, what most important thing is anybody can do fixation. That is not an issue. Which segments have to be fixed? Which segments have to be stabilized? Which segments are not in good shape and they need treatment? That is the issue. Now you carefully see this slide. You see there are two level problem. And I have done four level fixation. Why I have done four level fixation, you please read that article of mine or we can discuss it later. And you see the whole system has normalized after six months of surgery. And you have to only believe me, you have given me only very short time to say, otherwise I can present several videos. A magic is the clinical result, which you have never, never seen with just removal of the disc or just one level ACDF and things, which I was doing for a very long period of time. And you see the radiology, how radiology changes in a period of time, how new disc formation occurs, how the ligamentum flavor disappears, how the OP posterior longitudinal comes in picture. Another fascinating concept for you young people. When you talk of cervical degeneration, you never talk of atlantoaxial instability. Do you talk about it? Never. You see, show the literature. Nobody has talked about it. Multi-segmental spinal degeneration, I am saying it is due to instability. Atlantoaxial joint is the most mobile joint of the body. Atlantoaxial instability is the most common form of spinal instability, is the most neglected form of spinal instability, most untreated or undertreated form of spinal instability. So multi-level spinal degeneration, many of these cases you have to include atlantoaxial joint in your fixation construct, no decompression. And you must read my papers on this subject. You see multi-level multi-level issue, there is no compression here, but you see the facets, there is malalignment here. You have to include atlantoaxial joint in your fixation con construct. And if you do not include, I am telling you, you can have a negative clinical outcome and you see the magic. If you know how to do it, you will say magic is the clinical outcome. When your patient comes on a wheelchair, when your patient comes on a stretcher, having multi-level spinal degeneration, take it from me. Atlantoaxial instability is almost always associated. I have included it almost because I don't want to use always. I have got more than 65 patients in my department in KM hospital where I can show you records. They have come on a wheelchair and from the hospital, they have many of them have walked. And after two months, I think I, will, I don't want to give arbitrary number, but my feeling is after two months of surgery, 100% of these patients have come walking without any form of decompression. And when there is a severe degeneration, severe myelopathy, you have to include C1, C2 in your fixation construct. There are ways to treat. There's not always you have to do C1 screw. There are other ways which we can talk on some other time because the time is also a factor. Another beautiful thing, and many of you will love it and enjoy it, or at least be forced to think about it. Lumbar canal stenosis. What is lumbar canal stenosis? What you do with endoscope? You do decompression from this side and go from this side, and you will say, I can remove both sides, decompression from one side. I am saying decompression is not necessary in lumbar canal stenosis. And this article of mine, just read the title. Lumbar canal stenosis, analyzing the role of stabilization and futility of decompression. This is published in the biggest journal of neurosurgery, Journal of Neurosurgery. This is not just I'm saying and running away like that. It is published and it is heavily published. 
So lumbar canal stenosis is a result of vertical telescoping of your spine due to weakness of the muscles. If you exercise good enough, you will not get lumbar canal stenosis. It is not a stenosed canal. It is a massively unstable canal. Decompression is a negative, negative form of treatment. Stabilization is the treatment. You learn how to stabilize the spine. And if you can do it with minimal invasive methods, it may be the option or maybe the best option. The whole world of spine works on removal of osteophytes, either from front or making space from behind by laminectomy or laminoplasty. I am saying osteophytes are divine interventions. Osteophytes are protective interventions. Osteophytes are reversible interventions. Osteophytes are indicators of unstable spine. They are radiological indicators. You have to work on clinical indicators. You have to work on intraoperative indicators and fuse the right segments, but it is not necessary to remove the osteophytes. So this is my article on the subject. And this was another recent article which we published where we showed on with several images. You please read if you are interested. If you are not interested, then of course, then there is no question. So these are the osteophytes and you do only fixation, the osteophytes will disappear. And you see there are several cases that you are seeing on the screen. Deformities, cervical kyph kyphosis. So you read the literature on deformities. The whole world comes and does kyphectomy and corpectomies and decompression. Decompression is the treatment. I'm saying that deformation, deformities are not primary events. They are secondary, secondary to unstable spine. You identify the segments of unstable spine and do fixation. There is no need to do any kind of decompression. In my estimation, decompression without fixation is a criminal operation. Decompression in itself is a negative operation. Decompression should not be done. Only stabilization is the treatment. You please read my article on this subject, which was published in World Neurosurgery. This kind of deformity, there is atlantoaxial instability. You have to do only C1, C2 fixation. This kind of fixation, this kind of deformity, you have to identify which segments are unstable and stabilized. There are ways to do this, and we have written very heavily on this. Another very highly controversial, I am sure many of you may not like my dear friend from Libya who is visiting me at this point of time. He said, Dr. Goel, don't present this because these endoscope people may not like it. But whether you like it or not like it, just listen to it and ignore it. Prolapse disc. Prolapse disc is a consequence of unstable spine. Either instability causes prolapse disc or prolapse disc causes unstable spine. Stabilization is the treatment and disc resection is not necessary. And this is very heavily published for your information. So there is this single level disc ACDF is a very straightforward, simple operation, but I'm saying if you only stabilize within three months, this will be gone and the patient will improve remarkably in symptoms in the immediate post-operative period. So this was published in World Neurosurgery, my experience with this kind of facetal stabilization, lumbar disc herniation. This was my article where I have said identify it this is herniated even this segment may be unstable it is not that so identify unstable segment and i like trans articular camillus technique of fixation and this this will disappear in a period of time my last magic for you my last revolution for you is opll what you do for opll opll the whole world will do decompression either from by corpectomy from front or laminoplasty from behind. I have described for the first time in literature ob oblique corpectomy. Today I'm seeing ossification of posterior longitudinal ligament is a result of unstable spine. Compression is not the issue. Decompression is not the treatment identify unstable segments and stabilize. That is the treatment for OPLL and that is a magic. 
which you have never seen, those who have done OPLL, they know what the problems can occur and how the patients can worsen. And every, if, if somebody has done more than 10 cases and he says, I have never suffered a complication, I will say he's talking wrong. And I'm saying, I have published this, that you do only fixation and there is only one result in the patient clinical outcome. I am not talking of pedicular fixation or NTFX. I am talking of Camillus technique. There is something unique in this technique. Transarticular fixation has something magical. It is at the fulcrum fixation. It is solid fixation. It is a safe fixation. It is a strong fixation. And without question, there is some magic in this fixation. So this was my article with 14 patients of OPLL and more recently I published with 52 cases. You just have to, you know, don't keep your mind thick and firm and keep it supple. Keep it like a jelly and try to see if you can get some new information and see if you can use that information in your clinical practice. So this is OPLL. Don't do any decompression from front. Don't do any hopeless kind of operation of corpectomy, which I have done in my life. I have told you, I have described oblique corpectomy. I'm saying it is not necessary. It is not only necessary, it can be harmful. You do posterior decompression is such a compressed cord, it can be harmful. You come and do lateral fixation using very simple technique, very quick technique, very effective technique, and a magical technique. So my answer to OPLL, is atlanto axial instability the cause of OPL? Is atlanto axial and subaxial instability the cause of OPL? My answer is without any question, yes. And my answer is do not do any kind of decompression in such cases, do stabilization, and there is a beautiful clinical outcome waiting for you. Simple, solid, and strong. So atlanto axial and subaxial spinal stabilization, can it revolutionize surgical treatment of myelopathy related to OPLL? Without any doubt, yes. Can decompression as a form of treatment from front or from behind, can decompressive laminectomy, which is still the gold standard treatment of multi-segmental degeneration become historical? I am saying not just possible, it is already historical in my point of view. So instability is the nodal point of genesis Degeneration of spine does not begin with disc. Disc is divine. It begins with you because you have not taken care of your muscles properly. Muscle weakness related vertical spinal instability is the cause of spinal spondylosis and the treatment is stabilization. Decompression is not the treatment. So with this concept, decompression is never the treatment and compression is never primary. Thank you very much, Dr. Malcolm, for inviting me. And uh, I'm happy to be able to give this lecture to young and senior, I should call them endoscope-based surgeons or whatever, but you are students of science, students of techniques, and student of technology. You now become student of philosophy. Thank you very much. Any Malcolm, any question for me? No. No question. Hello. Hello. Beautiful talk. Amazing. Interesting challenging all concepts. I think it's rocked all of us over here. That's all I can tell you, sir. It's really amazing. Hello. And definitely we're putting a lot of things that you said into place. Thank you, sir. Hello. Is it Hello? Bupesh Patel from operating room?
Dr. We Dr. already Kavi? have started. Yeah, Dr. Kavi is with me. Dr. Is Kavi, can you hear me? No, I am Dr. Rupesh Patel. Mike is with me. Hello. Sir, आवाज नहीं आ रहा. Hello. 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 Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Can you hear us? Yes, sir. Sir, we already have started. She is fifty-three year old lady with left leg pain. Ah, uh, आ गई. Just show us the MRI image. MRI दिखाओ ना वहाँ पे. Zoom करो. Film दिखाओ. He has alpha S1 spondylolysis. He instability on dynamic view. Yeah, I am doing that now. Hello. Hello. Dr. Bupesh. Hello, sir. Can you give us a brief on the patient? Yeah, we can't hear you clearly. Hello. Now. Yeah, I can hear you, but I need you a little louder. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Please proceed. She is 53 year old lady with left leg pain. Hello. Rupesh, one second, please. Hello. Yeah. Now we can hear you. Yeah. So she is fifty-three-year-old lady with yes. left leg pain. Yes. And uh, you can see the MRI image. An X-ray, dynamic dynamic view shows spondylolysis at alpha S1 level. Yes. Uh, on axial view MR, you can see there is a left side disc herniation okay. and little bit of stenosis. Okay. So basically, we have lysis with instability, with disc herniation, stenosis, and uh, but can you just show the L45? You're doing an L5 S1, right? L5 S1, yeah. Correct. Can you show the L5 S1, please? Yeah. No, you show. Uh, it's getting cut. Can you show the lower part of the plate, please? Focus on the lower part, please. Yeah. Kindly focus me. Actual, actual, actual L5 S1. Yeah. Show me the actual L5 S1, please. Please, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Now, the reason why we selected this patient for a calif is basically the sac, though it is a little compressed, though there is a distal fragment out. It's basically capacious. It's not absolutely a stenotic segment. If the stenosis was there too much, then it would have been better to do a endoscopic T lift, a UBE T lift, where we would have to sacrifice a facet. Today we are going to try and preserve both the facets of the patient, and we are going to remove this distal fragment, and we are going to try and put in a cage through the foramen at L5 S1. Please believe me, it's difficult at L5 S1. But we'll be doing it quite easily, and you're going to be enjoying this. So please proceed. Can you show us the Anand Kavi in action, please? Yeah. Uh, Dr. The Kavi has already back. started the cases. Uh, we have marked everything, and we put guide wire, needle guide wire, dilator, and cannula. Okay. We just show us the final view. Just show the CM view, AP and lateral, and from beginning. Sir, you have just saved it, right? Okay. So, so your cannula is right, and anterior and in the disc. And it's quite at midpoint, so that should be a quite good position to place the case. But we will show you from beginning how we proceed. Can you show us the first CM images? How we put in the needle? No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, excellent, excellent positioning of the K wire. Yeah, the guide wire is coming just across the iliac crest. Yeah. You need to lift you the guide, dilator. Dilator is coming on guide wire. In line with the foramen. Now he's engaging the foramen. He's engaging below the facet. Yeah. You can see lateral. Yeah, we can see. That's very nice. So we have uh, made a cannula or uh, dilator little flat. Yeah. To go parallel to the end plate, so we don't uh, embark on lower end plate. So many times uh, in alpha S1, we can face this issue if iliac crest is little bit high. So here we, after entering into the disc, we made a dilator little flat. 
Yeah, thank you. Okay. So now we are doing endoscopic discectomy. After adequate decompression, we will prepare the end plate and cake. Can you have endoscopic view, please? And then we have one small talk from Dr. Zini Aitos. We'll cut you off for about two minutes. Can we have a scopic view? If you have introduced the scope. Can we start with Dr. Zinaito's lecture? He is waiting. Is the pressure for me too? Gravity feed Raku. What is a normal children? Endoscopic view the carona or you are directly there. Okay, okay, Diana. Either work of Donapa, Mompalatanaka, Dr. Zinia, are you there? Today, I will talk about Age Spine Hospital developed new PDF and compare minimal invasiveness between PDF and Miss PDF. In the fusion surgery, there are spinal canal invasion and intra-abdominal approach. PDF needs unilateral decompression at Cambian safety triangle, like Pakitanus endoscopic discectomy. It needs no canal decompression, so no dural damages and no internal organ damages. PDF is clear vision under continuous water irrigation. Fusion surgery has many complications. Since PDF has much muscle detachment, it tends to cause not only post-operative muscle atrophy, but also adhesion to the dura matter and nerve damage. TILF tends to cause nerve or dural damage. Since x ray retracts psoas muscle, it tends to cause L4 root policy and intestine rapture. OLIF tends to cause ureter damage. ALIF tends to cause vascular damage and ejaculation trouble. PDF complications are rare. PDF is similar to Pakistan's endoscopic discectomy and simple method. How to harvest the cancer's bone chips? Firstly, set the image in the inspire 30 degrees to the head side and 30 degrees to the opposite side and project the teardrop image on the monitor. A gem seeding needle is inserted to the iliac crest. A needle aspirates bone marrow blood, collects the cancerous bone chips from the iliac crest using a terrifying beer and 8mm incision. Horseps is also useful to collect the bone chips. Push out the bone chips from the terrifying onto the petri dish. Mix the cancerous bone with bone substitutes are padded into a cage. Mixed bone chips are padded into an 8mm flat outer cis. Mixed allograft bone is padded through the cannula into the disc space. Sequential holaminoplastic outside in method. Insert the needles bilaterally. Insert the sequential dilators. When the dilator stops against hypertrophied SAP, an 8mm outer tube is installed. Preoperative up and down and AP foraminal stenosis. Cambin's triangle is enlarged after foraminoplasty. Preoperative hypertrophied SAP and ARA. Enlarged foramen allowing the cage insertion. Narrow deformed Cambin's triangle. Enlarged Cambin's triangle. How to create a mother bed? Rotate the original rotate cutter with an improved tip of the outer tube. Cut the cartilage end plates thinly and uniformly under an endoscope to ensure good fitting with the cage. 
It's important to leave the hard body and the plates to prevent cage subsidence. A degree of slight bleeding is ideal for bone infusion. At above L45 level, the endoscope can be tilted widely from 30 degrees to 70 degrees by a unilateral approach method. How to insert the cage? This figure shows the relationships between the cage insertion pathway and the exiting route. L-shaped retract slider is inserted into an 8mm outer tube. Round the corner of the L-shaped retract slider protects exiting route. As the cage is sandwiched between two L-shaped retract sliders, the intervertebral space gradually expands as the trial is inserted. Advance the cage to 1 plus 3 of the disc space and the fluoroscopy. How to insert PPS? There are three key points of needle advancement. PPS entry pathway must be decided under correct AP and lateral floor image views. The jam city needle entry point is at the outer upper quarter of the pedicle under AP floor view. The needle is set at the posterior line of the pedicle. As can be seen from the CT image, the tip of the needle is at the outside and beginning point of the pedicle. PPS midpoint is important. In AP view, the tip of the needle must be inserted till the medial line of the pedicle. In lateral view, the needle tip must be set at the posterior line of the vertebra and midpoint of pedicle. CT also shows the same position. PPS terminal position. The final target point of PPS is slightly lateral, the center of vertebra, in AP view. In the lateral view, the needle tip is anterior 1 plus 3 of the vertebra. In CT, the tip of the needle is slightly lateral, the center of the vertebra, and is 1 plus 3 of the anterior. This patient was 71-year-old male with severe low back pain. The L5-6 disc was hollowed out, nucleus disappeared, and instability was occurring. Dissection of disc and end plate were done. A cage was sandwiched between double L-shaped retract sliders. The cage was inserted along L-shaped retract slider. PPS were inserted. Bone plantation was done. PDF relieved back pain. The patient showed severe low back pain. Expandable spacer elevate can minimize insertion force, provide controlled distraction, and 30 degrees low doses. This patient is a 51-year-old male with spondylolisthesis. stasis. Expandable lumbar fusion device lies was inserted into the intervertebral space at a contracted height. When it is expanded in the disc space, the implant can lift the upper and lower end plates to the appropriate height. Post-operative images show good correction. This female patient had L45 lateral instability and narrow disc space. She was suffered from bilateral leg pain and 100 meter intermittent claudication due to central canal stenosis and bilateral herniations at L45. Furthermore, she had left extraforaminal disc herniation, left L4 root damage. Transforaminal and extraforaminal approaches could remove central and lateral disc herniations. After feeling intermittent claudication and in Tractable pain completely disappeared. This patient was a 71-year-old male. He had moderate back pain, 20-meter intermittent claudication, and severe light sciatica. CD showed light horaminal stenosis at L5-S1 and spondylolisthesis. MRI showed also light L5 exiting root compressed. PD was performed. Light foraminotomy and insertion of the cage increased particular distance of the foramen.
This patient has degenerative spondylolisthesis and central canal stenosis. Axial dura area in MRI is median with Dicon viewer. Preoperative axial area was 42 mm square. Three months later to 72 mm square. And one year later became 125 mm square. This case is 108 kg L5S1 spondylolisthesis. Two 7 mm high elevates were inserted from both sides to raise the front to 13 mm. Lumbar eaten body fusion one year later was judged to have occurred if MPR CD showed bony continuity between the vertebral body and the cage, or 3D CD showed bridging formation. PDF uses the Pakistanis full endoscope. Using a 7 mm high interbody cage, the muscle retraction area is 0.64 cm square. Muscle quadrant retractor of Miss Tilif is 4 times to 10 times larger than muscle retraction of PDF. We compared 45 PDF cases and 71 Miss Tilif cases. There were no significant differences in sex ratio, age ratio, surgical level distribution or disease ratio between two had no significant difference. PDF breathing is low and postoperative drainage bags were not required. There were no cases of postoperative hematoma and no dura tear in PDF, but there was not a statistically significant difference between the two groups. There was a tendency for more exiting root damage in PDF. Clinical outcomes showed significant improvement from preoperative levels in both groups at each postoperative evaluation time. PDF bus showed statistically significant improvement over mistilif at two weeks. ODI and JOA or PDF showed statistically significant improvement over mistilif at each postoperative evaluation time. Magnum's improvement was not significant difference between the two groups. Fatty degeneration of multifidus muscles were analyzed by Gotteri air classification in T2 enhanced coronal image. Imaging comparison. The areas of the outer tubes have a difference of 4 to 10 times. The postoperative dura of stenosis was significantly dilated in both groups. In postoperative comparison, TDF of direct decompression was significantly greater than PDF of indirect decompression. Muscle fatty degeneration of PDF is significantly less. Indefficient fusion of PDF tended to be less. Conclusion of full endoscopic fusion surgery. PDF requires small incision at Cambin's safety triangle and a continuous irrigation, so clear vision. Smooth mother bed can be made under endoscope. Facet and muscle are preserved. Enough bone transplantation. Exiting root is protected by air retractor. Various type of cage can be inserted along air retractor slider. No canal decompression in direct method. So no dual tear no internal organs damage. PDF is more minimally invasive than Miss TDF. Thank you very much. So much. Any questions for Dr. Zinia? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Anand Kavi is now, I think, decompressing the disc. You can see he's working towards the end plate. At your 12 o'clock is the roof. Towards your, I think, the left no, patient is. So uh, towards the 9 o'clock is the cranial end, and towards 3 o'clock is the caudal end. So he's decompressing the disc. 